Now we're back. Great. Thanks, everybody. We are back. <laughs> Uh, thank Bob Whitcomb for joining us in a you know whirlwind discussion of uh, a lot of the findings of the poll by John Della Volpe up at Harvard and uh, a little discussion on the public or lack of public support for this financing structure for the Pawtucket Red Sox. I do want to welcome in Henry uh, Kinch. Uh, Henry, you want to head on in? How are you, sir? I'm fine, sir. How are you doing? Good. Good. So, uh, Henry, uh, as introduction, former councilman. Uh, candidate for mayor a few years ago, been wildly advocate on any number of issues in Pawtucket, and uh, and you've raised a lot of concerns about this Pawtucket Red Sox deal. Listen, you are pro Pawtucket and you are pro Paw Sox, but this deal raises a number of questions. Well, it, it, it has for me right from the start, and particularly because I was concerned more with the uh, Pawtucket portion of the deal. What Pawtucket's obligation yeah, was. I, I have strike. never I have never been a believer that A, there was enough money in the bill to cover the expenses that Pawtucket would be on the hook for, and, and B, that we had the capacity to pay it back. And that is becoming more and more clear now that those of us who raise those concerns, um, that looks to be the case. This thing, uh, th they're, they're saying the project is somewhere between 80 and about 80 something million dollars in the House Finance Committee hearing a couple weeks ago. I thought uh, uh, Republican House members, Gia Russo and Morgan, now a candidate for governor, raised a number of concerns. So let me just tick them off. Number one was uh, no, uh, not included in the cost was the cleanup cost of the environmental issues. Correct. Number two was no long-term financing structure or responsibility to the long-term maintenance cost of the stadium, the new stadium. And, you know, listen, every five years you're going to have to pump in five or ten million dollars. So that wasn't covered. And then a really interesting one, which I think escaped me certainly, was McCoy, there's a cost associated with whatever you do with it. If you tear it down, it's going to be a few million dollars. If you're going to... Uh, a rehab it to be a community uh, sports facility, it's going to cost a few million dollars, but regardless of whatever you do with it, it's going to cost millions of dollars. So you, you're in and around there, around 15, 20 additional, and then uh, Rhode Island General Treasurer Magaziner said maybe they've under even estimated what the actual financing costs by somewhere around 10 or 12 million dollars. Yeah, I don't think that there's any doubt that the costs have been underestimated. Um, just quickly uh, for your viewers, as the bill stands now, Pawtucket would borrow $15 million. Right. That, the, that, uh, that excludes the Treasurer's number, which is closer to 18 or 19. Five million comes right off the top to pay for the stadium. So Pawtucket then has $10 million. Now, according to the legislation, which is supposed to you know, be amended, and it probably will be, uh, that gives us $10 million left to pay for the land acquisition, no matter what mode it takes, right. and all infrastructure costs, which, in my opinion, is going to be in the millions. Now, the administration says that is not the case. I disagree. Uh, if you know anything about the roads in Pawtucket, uh, there's going to have, particularly going south from the Massachusetts line, uh, this is a major issue. There is no direct access from right. south to that site, like there is going north off of School Street. Sorry to be talking Pawtucket East. You are so talking Pawtucket. <laughs> and then and you I take a left where the Almax used I, to be. I apologize for that, but, you know, it's a concern. And for people to say uh, that, you know, there won't be any infrastructure costs, to me, is just uh, either naive or... I'm not going to say dishonest, but it's clearly not. We're not in the highest trans level. Of yeah, trans so uh, Senate had a hearing the other day, and uh, a new issue has bu bubbled up, which was senators asked for financials de facto. Listen, you're coming to us. You're asking us to take on tens of millions of dollars of, of uh, long-term obligation. We'd like to see your books, and we'd like to see if you're taking any profit out. And their response was no. Correct. Correct, as I, as I understand it, yes. And, and that's creating a, a new level of agita, I think, amongst members. And certainly, I think what's a little bit surprising that they wouldn't open the books, considering that they've only owned the team for barely two years. Well, 
if I may, what's really concerning about that <clears throat> to me is that we're not getting the same courtesies that the people of San Diego got when the much talked about or much referred to uh, Petco Park, of which Mr. Lucchino was an owner of the team at that time, uh, that project, Petco Park, which was supposed to be revenue neutral, it was not. The people of San Diego currently now are paying somewhere around $15 million a year to pay the bonds off that they were told they weren't going to have to pay. Secondly, they opened up the books to the uh, city of San Diego. There is numerous references uh, to the fact that they did that. And thirdly, uh, it was put on the ballot, which I have been right. a very strong advocate for. So my question is, why aren't we getting the same courtesies? It seems to me that we should get the same courtesies as the people of San Diego got, considering if you look at the contents of the deal in San Diego, it is almost identical to what is being pitched here. So let, let, let's talk about where we are right now in the process, and then let's talk about what we anticipate next. So where we are right now is Senate Finance Committee, who's chaired by a Pawtucket senator. He uh, is, he's from East Province, who has a portion of Pawtucket. And he, he's been publicly an advocate of this project. Yes. And the Senate president's been an advocate of this project. And this is pending over there, but they've talked that there will be amendments to, the, to what's been proposed so far. Uh, do we have any idea what these amendments are? No, today? I mean, I don't think we do. Uh, and, you know, let me just say, if I might, you know, I think sometimes the General Assembly, you know, uh, gets a bad, rep a bad rap, if you will. But in this case, uh, you know, when it comes to these hearings, the Senate leadership, Leader McCaffrey, President Ruggiero, Senator Connolly, I think deserves accolades for having the hearings the way they've had it. You know, they've been all over the state. I've attended two or three of them, testified twice. Uh, that is kind of unprecedented yeah. here in Rhode Island. If, and, and to them, I would say kudos to you because you did what you said you were going to do. So uh, is will one of those amendments be a poison pill? In other words, will they amend it such that, that they know? Is that the way out for them, I, that they amend it? And the ownership know. says we can't? I'm we, still, you know, to me, as a lifelong resident of Pawtucket, my concern is Pawtucket and the people of Pawtucket and what they're on the hook for. Uh, if they are going to amend it to borrow more, that's an issue, because right now at 15 million, I think the estimate is about 950 thousand a year for 30 years. Right. Uh, if it goes up to 18, 19 million, probably 1.3 million a year. It raises the uh, ante, if you will. Uh, and for everybody, you know, in and let, 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 let's talk about Pawtucket. Pawtucket's yeah. bonds rating is weak, as is. Uh, bond rating came out. They did not get downgraded in the spring, but they didn't get upgraded either by, I think it was Moody's. Since then, a lot of bad news. So uh, one of the strongest community event, uh, events there, the Camp Theater, has announced that they're leaving and going to Warwick. A big blow, I think, both psychologically Agreed. it really is a great theater company yeah, um, then Memorial Hospital uh, announcing that it's closing its 800 jobs those are good jobs uh, it's been an absolute pillar of the community there um, 600 full-time equivalents 800 employees and then also uh, we broke a story about Hasbro uh, one of the few major public corporations in Rhode Island uh, headquartered in Pawtucket, is looking to uh, consolidate its different locations. They have a big facility in East Providence where the racetrack used to be, mm -hmm. the headquarters over on Newport Avenue, and then a major facility down here. They want to be on one campus. They want to have a cool, you know, Nike experience. Warmer, you know, warmer and cooler? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're an entertainment company. So they want that energy and that vibe going forward, and they have cool people coming in to, to partner with. Those are three big blows. Yes. Pawtucket's been spending a tremendous amount of energy, time, resources, and and favors, the chits, trying to hold on to 32 jobs, which probably would have stayed at McCoy. Is the priorities a little mixed up? Well, you know, I can't speak for the administration's priorities. I can tell you that Memorial Hospital is very, very disturbing and damaging. Um, as you point out correctly, these are real jobs. Yeah. Uh, you know, mostly held by residents of Pawtucket. Uh, this is people who use that money for restaurants, and you know it, it will have a, a devastating epi economic impact, in my opinion. 
if this holds, which, I mean, I don't know, I don't see, uh, I know there's a lot of efforts going on right now and I'm not privy to them, but if this holds, this is a devastating impact to the city of Pawtucket. Uh, to reiterate, real jobs, <laughs> real economic impact. Yeah. I, mean, these, I mean, my mom worked there for 30 years. Right. Um, so, you know, and frankly, right out of college, I worked there. Yeah. So it's not just an economic issue, it's a hometown issue. And frankly, to me, more important than the Red Sox. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to say, I mean, listen, we, we all, the, the, the one thing in this discussion is an absolute is everybody loves the Paw Sox. I, I haven't heard anyone. Absolutely. Um, it, but it's 32 full-time jobs, yeah. and its economic impacts can be debated on and on in Fanata as to what it really does to drive an, to drive an economy. Um, uh, let's jump over a little bit to the political impacts, uh, especially the poll released last week by Go Local in partnership with John Delavolpe up at Harvard, and it says, listen, 29% support this, uh, 68 or 69% oppose it. Uh, John Delavolpe was calling me with the uh, overnights the first couple nights, and he's like, people hate this Paw Sox deal. He said, it's every demographic, it's every region, and if it's 29% statewide, Blackstone Valley was less than 29%. This dog is not hunting with the public. Do elected officials who are up this cycle in re-election put themselves at risk if they jam this thing through and pull a Rhode Island General Assembly and slide this thing through this year? Yeah, I mean, I believe that that's true. Um, <clears throat> that poll, the, the poll you speak to about um, your pollster, I think the news here is that it confirms that the needle has not moved on this project yeah. in two years plus. Yeah. Because if you go back to polls that were done by uh, the pollster who is being referred to in ads and so forth and so on, uh, those numbers are very close to what John came up with. This needle has not moved, and the location is irrelevant. Yeah. They don't care if it's in uh, Providence. They don't care if it's in Pawtucket. You know, the, the Cranston Councilman, well, I'll bring it to Cranston. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The only way, in my opinion, and I, I wrote this um, to go lo local as a, as a mindsetter, is that the, the team, as it said it would do in Providence, yeah. finances the stadium. And then the state would split with the city, the infrastructure, and the land cost. I think that's the only way. And, and i, and I got to tell you, I think they've pushed this long, too long, too hard. I think that from an economic development standpoint, it makes some sense that the state do, I mean, putting the burden on Pawtucket is a tough burden in Pawtucket. State does the, the land acquisition, the roads, and the infrastructure improvement. The owners own this team. They privately own it. They are you know, fabulously wealthy, successful individuals. Only one of them lives in Rhode Island. Most of them have moved out of Rhode Island for tax purposes. Uh, they build the stadium if they believe so strongly, and I think people might go along. Yeah, and as that. I said, that's what they were saying. Yeah, and not too long ago. I mean, you know, Mr. Skeffington has passed. Rest in rest in peace. But you know, that's what they were saying, and uh, I don't, I just don't believe that the people of Rhode Island. Certainly, I don't. I don't want to own the stadium. I, right. I mean, I just don't. And well, last question. Yeah. What happens next? What do we? What should people be looking? Well, for I think today's week? news is big. Yeah. Um, both the governor and Chairman Conley have pretty much said, if we don't get these financials, uh, this thing is just a dead in the water. Yeah. Uh, and I think appropriately so. I mean, yeah. if you were going to a bank looking for a mortgage, they'd want to see what your income is and what your profits right. are. I think that's appropriate, and as I said, uh, just to go back to what we talked about earlier, the fact that it was done in San Diego, right, by Larry Lucchino, by Larry the same, Lucchino, the same chair. Uh, so I don't understand why Rhode Island doesn't get the same courtesies as San Diego got. I mean, it makes no sense to me. So we should get that kudos to the governor and to to Chairman Conley for insisting that we get that information. I think it's very important. Um, I mean, appreciate it. Appreciate it all the time coming over, spending a few minutes with us. Very insightful, and you've been involved with it from the beginning. We're going to be right back with a leading uh, activist over at Providence College, uh, taking on uh, you know a really significant issue over there. Uh, almost amazing that this could even happen in 2017, but it does seem to rear its ugly head. 
Uh, it happens at colleges across the country from time to time, but PC seems to have an issue with this, needs to tackle it. We'll be right back.